So, for a close to functional build state, it sure is taking some time to be developed. I hope to finish before 2020, yeah, that's gonna happen. I actually haven't touched anything programming related for at least a few months. Though I went back to work on the project and spent two weeks developing it, until all its basic features are working properly. Although poorly. So that as I promised on the last video, the project repo can be open for public access. Don't expect a flawless experience though, the code is a total house of cards and it will surely break if you so much force it enough. The project is now named as Postpal. I know I just keep changing it devlog after devlog, but I want to keep a name that I don't need to change after it's too late on development and changing it would just confuse people. In these past months, I actually got some ideas for the user interface. The more features I made, the more disgustingly cluttered the doc would get, so I separated the user parameters from the post palette through a tab container. Also, I made a few changes to the UI. It just looks more pretty, I guess. I had to make a few changes so the add-on now works on 3.4, which just changes from which group the plugin references the editor from. When editing a pose, the plugin will queue the previous selected animation player instead of purely resetting. This is just to fix annoyances, but it doesn't work 100%. The pose previews kept the same, which means they're unoptimized. Basically, the thumbnail generation is made by instancing a dummy version of the edited scene and applying the pose. For now, the lag is not so noticeable, but with tons of thumbnails generating at the same frames, I would imagine it could become a bigger problem. I tried an approach where there's a single pose generator that sends the texture to each pose preview, but because of the nature of snapshotting a viewport, each thumbnail would take two frames to render. I saved the last changes on a separate branch and committed the last changes as given up, which is always reassuring. I changed the add-on architecture so using it is less confusing. Remember filter poses and sub-collections? Me neither. It's been a year since last devlog and I don't expect no one to comprehend that mess of software design. Filter poses are now just called filters and should only store notepads. Although for now they still store properties, until I decide to make a proper way to handle them specifically. Collections are now called templates, and they still filter poses previous functionality of serving as a base for created poses. I figured storing the same properties in the pose as the template would be redundant and inefficient, as it wouldn't reflect the template in case the data gets changed. So I implemented apply pose feature, which applies in a scene without storing animation key data. They still store subcollections, but subcollections are now renamed as collections. They don't actually have any new fancy features, they just directly store poses. I made a few changes to Godet's rig. Particularly, I drew the remaining five directions of her body and fixed a few joints so she spins in a proper full circle. I actually wanted to make the repo public when her rig is already fully finished, but she already took me three days to make, so I finished her remaining five directions and called it a day. Her poselib is supposed to be an example resource so the user doesn't have to create a full rig just to test out the add-on. She has eight templates, each corresponding to one direction. Each template has three poses. I wanted to give her some expressions and hand poses, but it will have to wait on some next build. I wanted to move a rig folder to add-on so it can be accessible for the future when the add-on is on the asset lab, but moving her scene proved to be cumbersome. Who knew Godot's custom resources are bad at solving broken dependencies? I researched some classes for loading resources to find a class that can check broken dependencies and return the broken path, but found none, or at least I didn't comprehend it enough, so I made a custom variable to store external resources. So in theory, I can check for each broken path and make the user select the new path. Kinda like video editors do it. I guess this cuts a bit of performance, but it was the best approach I came up with. The changes are made on a new branch because I don't wanna take the risk of corrupting existing pose labs. I imagine the same approach could actually fix notepad changes as well, because what's wrong with reinventing the wheel, right? I switched the pose lib resources format from text to binary. I don't see the performance gains yet, probably would take larger files to notice gains. I still don't see how binary file size could actually be bigger than text ones. I thought the opposite would happen. This change is made because I don't think verbose version control for this sort of file is needed. 
I made some bug fixes, but honestly I find bug fixes are kind of just feature completions if the software isn't even released yet. I see no point in talking about them in detail, so it's on screen. The only fix worth reporting though is the scary bug when you switch an editing scene while still editing a pose. Godot would crash because the animation player's reference to the edited scene would be lost. So did I find a way to cut all references to the scene on animation player when the scene changes? Absolutely not, just hide it away. There is no bug if no one ever finds it. So yeah, the repo is public now. You can find a link to the repo in the description. There's a readme with an overview of the project. Be wary of bugs, because it will probably happen. I suggest to not use it in production as the plugin is quite fragile. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or contact me on Twitter.